Hi everyone, I thought I'd try something different for a change. So I thought I'd try and create a video showing you how I set up my throttle arming on my Tyrannus. The reason being that it's slightly different to how most people do it. I've got mine set up so that I can't arm anything until the throttle is all the way down. So it just adds that extra element of safety and it's really easy to do. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, make a quick video and show you guys how I do it. So I've basically set up a demo aircraft. It's just a complete plane aircraft, no settings on it whatsoever, apart from the basic inputs from the Tyrannus. So if I open this up, we'll get started. But the first thing you need to do is create a curve. It's just a simple two point curve and you set both points to negative 100. That's it done, apart from giving it a name, we'd call it cut, and then we know what we're dealing with. You don't have to use a curve, you could use a special function and have it to override the channel to minus 100. But in all honesty, I prefer the curve because you can look on the input screen and see exactly what's happening. It shows you everything you need to know, rather than it just being some random special function on the special function screen. Okay, so we've got a curve. The next thing we need to do is create some logical switches. And this is basically what takes care of not arming anything until the throttle has been down for half a second at least. A little word of warning, there's a, a bug at the moment in um, OpenTX Companion, which means when you create a logical switch, it doesn't actually show up in any drop boxes. So I'll take you through what you need to do the first time to get around this bug but then I'll cut the bugs out so it's it just flows better. They do know about the bug and it should be fixed in the next version. The version I'm currently using is 2.2.1, which is a 2017 December release. So anything after that, the bug should be fixed. But anyway, for our first logical switch, we just need to create a rule that says when A is less than X. So for A, we're going to use our throttle and we're going to set it to minus 98. So basically when the throttle is lower than minus 98, the, the rule will trigger. The next rule is going to be an OR rule. So that means if this OR this, then that is active. So what we ideally we want in here is LO1. Ah, it's appeared. Which is strange. <laughs> That's the bug. And in here for our OR, we want LO2, which is not appearing. So for now, I'm just going to set it to LO1. And the way to get it to work is you just close this down and reopen it. It's as simple as that. So now if we go in logical switches, LO2 should be here. There we go. So if LO1 or LO2 are active, LO2 will be active, which doesn't make sense at the moment but we add in a half second delay. So basically the first time it triggers is when LO1 is down and then it will keep on triggering because itself is triggered until the switch comes off. So we need to add in the switch. I, I use SF, which is the two position switch at the back and I have it so that if the switch is away from me, it's armed. And if it's flicks towards me, it's disarmed. Just because I, f I find it easier to flick it towards me, so it's easier to disarm the craft. But that's basically our logical switches created. The next thing we need to do is actually get them to interact with the signals coming fr uh, from the transmitter. So we go in our throttle and we add in a switch here which is LO2. So all the time the LO2 is active, the throttle will work as normal, which is fine, but we also need to tell it what to do when LO2 isn't active. So we go in and duplicate it. We'll call this one cut. If I could spell and what we need to do is change this to if not LO2 and what we're going to do is set it to use our curve that we created which is down here labeled cut so now as you can see it's nice and easy um, 
If logical switch 2 is active, the throttle is normal. If logical switch 2 is not active, then cut the throttle using our curve. I just think it's much easier to read than yeah, the random special function. And that, if you're flying line of sight aircraft, is basically it. By line of sight, I'm meaning if you've just got a receiver and your servo is plugged straight into your receiver, that's, that's all you need. The problem now comes if you're flying something with a flight controller. So if you've got a quadcopter or an, a, an aircraft with a flight controller running a so beta flight or INAV, something like that. So if you're using a flight controller, the way you'd normally set it up is to create an arming switch like this, which you would put through to your flight controller and it would change the mode. So if I switch over to iNav, it won't show you properly because my S800 hasn't got satellite lock at the moment. But this arm switch here, it, at the moment it's disarmed. We move it to arm, it's armed. And back again. The problem with this is you can get into a situation like this where your transmitter won't be armed but your flight controller thinks that it is. If the transmitter's not armed, the flight controller shouldn't think that it is. It will lead to problems. You, you'll, you know, if you've got a multi-rotor and you, you arm it, you'll end up with spinning motors, yet you'll have no control or you won't have full control over them because the throttle on the transmitter won't be active. It also, it's best to be consistent. If the transmitter's not active, the flight controller shouldn't think that it is. Yeah, it, it's just common sense, really. So to get around this, it's quite simple. If we go back into our OpenTX companion, all we need to do is change this to our logical switch. So set that to L02, and that's all you need to do. So if we head back into iNav, through the magic of editing, I've updated my Tyrannus. So now the throttle's down, if I arm, ah, sorry, one thing I should mention is you may have to reset how you arm because it, it reverses. Um, so that's now armed, that's now disarmed. Armed, disarmed. Right, if I raise the throttle and try to arm it, it does nothing. The two devices are now completely linked and working as they should. If I lower the throttle, it's now armed. So that's how you fix that issue. Right, so the only other thing that we can do is set up some feedback. So we can set it up to play a track, which I don't think on here I've actually got my custom tracks. Yeah, let's say on for the minute and I'll obviously if you have not zero two you can have obviously when you set it up it you use meaningful uh, meaningful tracks but um, yeah that's basically it now when you arm and disarm your your flight controller won't arm and disarm until it's sure that the transmitter is armed and you've got feedback that's how i set mine up apologies for my beeping tyrannus it's a bit close to the s800 so it keeps on dropping signal but yeah that's it one thing that i forgot to mention is that i also have a website and on this website the tutorial that i've just done plus others that i may make in the future will already be on here so you can go on there and check out all the settings in a nice easy to read format it saves having to pause videos go back and all this sort of rubbish it's all just there um, and easier to read so hopefully that will help you out just as much if not more than the video i'll put a link in the description if you found the video useful thumbs up would be great if you thought it was shit thumbs down's fine it's my first go at this so if you've got any constructive criticism that would also be brilliant but yeah Thanks for watching, thanks for your time, have a great day, bye.